Well, welcome, Senator Serrano. Uh, my name is Cecil Corbin Mark. I'm the Deputy Director of We Act for Environmental Justice. And as we celebrate Earth Day, I have the distinct pleasure of interviewing Senator Jose M. Serrano. He is the state senator for the 29th Senatorial District that covers parts of the South Bronx, like Mott Haven, uh, over to East Harlem, El Barrio, uh, down to uh, Roosevelt Island, and also including parts on the west side. So uh, it's a, indeed a pleasure. Senator Serrano is also the first Latinx uh, chair of the state's Senate Park Committee. So thank you and welcome. Thank you very much, Cecil. It's such a pleasure to be here speaking with you. I want to thank you for your years of incredible uh, advocacy on behalf of environmental justice issues throughout our community. Uh, and um, it, it really is uh, an amazing opportunity to talk about the importance of Earth Day. So thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to dive right in. And uh, my very first question to you, Senator, is it's been 50 years since the first Earth Day when people across the US came together to fight for a healthier world. Now more than ever, people are relying on the natural world as a source of calm and health. Can you share with us what Earth Day means to you? Earth Day is easily one of my, uh, one of my favorite days of the year. And uh, this year with all that we're dealing with, it takes on an even higher, uh, higher importance because um, the issues that we deal with is in involving this pandemic are very closely connected to public health policy. Uh, and the beauty of Earth Day is that not only does it give us an opportunity to look around and pause and be grateful for the natural world that we have around us and understanding the physical and emotional and mental health benefits that the natural world brings, but it also gives us a good opportunity to focus on and the public health policy, the environmental justice policy, uh, our policy involving uh, our, our green spaces and access to green spaces. Um, and we as a legislature use this as a good opportunity to come together and get all on the same page and put uh, any kind of partisanship aside to find ways to promote better public health policy. One of the very unfortunate uh, things that have uh, been highlighted throughout this pandemic has been the uh, issue of health disparities in our community. You and I have had this conversation many times before. Our community, communities of color have some of the highest levels of uh, health disparities uh, than any other part of the nation. Um, and now that we're dealing with this public health crisis and the pandemic, we're seeing how there's a direct line drawn between uh, those realities um, and the high number of fatalities in our community. So we will come through this, God willing, and when we do, we have to make sure that we take a much more serious approach to bridging the gap on health disparities, the connection between uh, our public health policy, our, our natural health policy, our environmental justice policy, and doing so in a way that helps us save lives. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for your leadership on, on these issues as well. Um, my next question is, uh, you've been an environmental champion. What environmental policy are you most proud of and most excited about accomplishing in the near future? Well, I, I'm very grateful to have worked with uh, folks like yourself and many others in the environmental advocacy community who tirelessly year after year uh, work on issues of great importance uh, and that they affect myself, my family, my community uh, in, in real meaningful ways. Um, and for a while it was, it was sort of you know, hard to grasp the victories, but over the last year and a half, we're starting to see some real movement on things that we've been fighting for for a very long time. We're very excited about the ban on plastic bags in supermarkets. This was, a, a, to me, a no-brainer. We've seen it done in other parts of the country and the world did not end. Indeed, we're seeing a shift in the culture in our communities where folks are using their reusable bags. They're remembering to bring them with them when they head out in the morning. And I'll be the first to admit, the first week 
that the ban was in place, I would, oh, forget my reusable bag. And, you know, now I don't make that mistake anymore. And we know to have extra on us all the time. And we're seeing that out in our community as well, where folks are having a shift uh, of the way that they understand or the cultural shift in how they use bags and so on. That is already having a profound effect on uh, the amount of plastic litter and trash that we see on our streets. So you could imagine it's not working its way back into our waterways. So it is a very profound and, and meaningful change. I'm also really excited about uh, our commitment to the Restore Mother Nature Act. Um, this is one of those investments that I believe will pay dividends for many, many years to come and for generations to come. And I'm glad that even though we're in really tough financial straits right now, that we're not backing away from our commitment uh, to this really important uh, environmental policy and public health policy, I think the Restore Mother Nature Act will go a long ways to ensuring uh, that we can maintain our environmental world, that we, we can maintain the resiliency and grow the resiliency that we need in our community. I'm also excited about some bits of legislation that I've been working on, uh, namely environmental impact zones. I hope to get that passed this year through remote session. That would be great if we can get that done. It will help demystify a lot of the discussion about which communities have bore the brunt of bad policy when it comes to pollution um, and how it has a negative effect on communities of color how it's had a negative effect on poorer communities. Um, and I think that if we get that bill passed, it'll go a long way to making that uh, a reality. The other that I'm pretty excited about is uh, banning glyphosate. Um, I believe that that is a um, very toxic uh, chemical that's widely used in farming and then uh, throughout agriculture and in landscaping. Um, but we're starting to see a lot of evidence that this is a very unsafe product. Um, and that uh, we should try to strive to find greener alternatives uh, so that we can have a, a better, safer, cleaner environment going forward. There's a, there's a myriad of good legislation out there. I'm hopeful that we can get that done through a remote session this year. And I hope that Earth Day, with its 50 years of longstanding advocacy and being a great opportunity to rally for the things that we care about, coupled with this unfortunate, um, uh, horrible pandemic that we're in that is shining a very strong spotlight on the need for good public health policy and that we've combined those two, we can move forward to some meaningful changes uh, that have a lasting effect for our community. Well, I am so glad to hear you uh, make that linkage, Senator. I wanna thank you for your years of leadership. I wanna thank you for your stewardship of the Parks Committee. And I am very proud to uh, have you as someone that I can rely on to make sure that communities of color, low-income communities, those communities that have the greatest disparities are also protected and that your fighting there for us means a lot. So thank you for your time and happy Earth Day. Thank you, happy Earth Day to you as well, Cecil.